Good day to all. Today I will tell you a story about a man whom few people know about, but who left an incredible mark on the history of American crime, Max Jackson. This man became known as the most noble criminal in history because he stole from the rich to help poor and needy people. His story is an amazing example of how one person can change the world even while breaking the law. Max Jackson, the son of humble local workers, grew up in a poor area of the city. His childhood was difficult. His father, consumed by alcohol, was rarely at home, and his mother worked as hard as she could to feed the family. Max was often beaten at school, and he felt lonely and misunderstood. Despite this, Max was a smart child. He quickly became adept at street fighting and soon began to turn his intellect to creating complex plans. His dream is to leave this poor area and leave behind the life of the needy forever. As Max grew, his character became more and more tough. He began to treat those around him harshly, responding to aggression with aggression of his own. His reputation as a difficult guy only grew over the years. One day, when Max was 16 years old, he was arrested for robbing a local store. This was the first serious incident that brought attention to his potential as a criminal. Instead of improving, Max only delved deeper into the world of crime, becoming more and more dangerous and merciless. Despite this, Max remained a man with ambitions. He missed the money and opportunities that the rich part of the city provided. This prompted him to create more complex and ambitious plans aimed at robbing rich and powerful people. Every year, Max became more famous and dangerous. His name began to be mentioned in criminal circles with horror and admiration. But even in the darkest moments of his life, Max maintained his goal of leaving the area and becoming a powerful and free man. Since childhood, Max has felt bitterness and hatred towards rich people. They often humiliated him because of his poverty, looking down on him as if he were inferior to them. These unpleasant memories and insults became fuel for his thirst for revenge and desire to return with wealth and power. With each new robbery of Max, his hatred of wealth and influence only intensified. He saw this as an opportunity to take revenge for all the wrongs he suffered in the past. Every dollar he stole was an act of justice in his eyes, a step toward proving to everyone that he was no less worthy of success than those who looked down on him. But even in his darkest moments, Max never forgot his dream of leaving the area and becoming something more. His hatred of wealth was not so much a desire to destroy as a desire to create something of his own, regardless of who he had to cross to achieve this goal. At the age of 17, Max realized that he could not continue to live on the edge of the abyss, dependent on random robberies and criminal affairs. He decided to take his life into his own hands and start working honestly to provide for himself and help his parents. Max began working in construction, earning every dollar through hard work. The days were long and tiring, but he didn't complain. Every dollar he earned through honest labor brought him a sense of pride and dignity that he never experienced when he was involved in criminal matters. Max began saving every cent he earned, dreaming of the day when he could leave the area and start a new life. He helped his parents by paying bills and helping them cope with financial difficulties. But even while working at a construction site, Max could not completely forget about his ambitions and desire to return to crime. Sometimes, when night fell, he gazed at the flickering lights of the wealthy neighborhoods, feeling that this life was just a temporary obstacle on his way to the top. Despite all his efforts and aspirations, Max could not escape his past. At some point, when money at a construction site stopped bringing him satisfaction, and when his parents also needed additional help, Max turned to crime again. He started with small cases seemingly innocent thefts, to plug a hole in his finances. But every time he committed a crime, his old self would wake up again, reminding him that he would never be able to escape his past. Soon, petty thefts grew into more serious crimes, robberies, scams, even violence. 
Max was drawn into the criminal world again and again, despite his personal efforts to avoid it. Every day his struggle with himself became more and more difficult. His new life, building a future, seemed like a distant and unattainable dream. He understood that the further he went into crime, the more difficult it would be for him to get out of this abyss. With petty thefts, Max began to pay attention to those around him and realized that many, like him in the past, needed help. In addition to helping his parents, Max began to allocate part of his illegal earnings to charity. He organized secret deliveries of food and clothing to poor families in his area, especially children who, like him in the past, suffered from a lack of resources. This action brought him some sense of satisfaction. It compensated for his internal struggle and helped him forget about the difficult side of his life. However, despite his charitable deeds, Max knew that this would not completely solve his problems. He still had to commit crimes to survive in this world. His actions became more and more dangerous and risky, and his personal happiness seemed more and more unattainable. Despite his charitable deeds and desire for a better life, Max's hatred of rich people remained in his heart. He saw their luxurious mansions, expensive cars, and luxurious lifestyles, and this only fueled the flames of his hatred. From time to time, Max plunged into the world of crime again, robbing rich and powerful people. His thefts became increasingly cunning and ambitious, taking the form of carefully planned robberies and scams. Each new robbery brought Max not only money, but also a feeling of revenge and satisfaction. He saw this as an opportunity to come back with wealth and power, to finally prove to everyone that he was no less worthy of success than those who looked down on him as a child. But with each new robbery, Max went deeper into the darkness of crime, losing a part of himself along the way. At the age of 20, Max, consumed by his hatred of the rich and his thirst for revenge, decided on the most ambitious robbery of his life. He targeted an influential and wealthy man from his small town, whose affairs and influence extended far beyond ordinary people. Under the guise of night, Max and his accomplices carefully planned the robbery. They studied every detail, thought through every step, and anticipated any possible obstacles. For Max, this was not just a robbery. It was an expression of his revenge and thirst for revenge on those who once looked down on him and his family. When the X hour arrived, Max and his bandits broke into the target's house and began to search it for valuables and money. They met with resistance, but Max was determined and merciless. His hatred of wealth weighed on him, and he stopped at nothing to get to his goal. Finally, they reached a safe in which, according to rumors, huge sums of money and valuable documents were kept. Max confidently cracked the safe and found what he was looking for. Max's first big robbery was not only successful for him, but also amazingly exciting. Like the adrenaline pumping through his veins, every step, every moment of tension brought him satisfaction and excitement. When they left the influential man's house, Max felt revitalized and full of energy. His heart beat faster, his hands trembled with excitement. This was something completely new to him, and he felt that this was just the beginning of his new life in the world of crime. This success only strengthened his determination and confidence. Max felt that he had finally found his true calling, his true strength. He no longer needed to hide in the shadows and hide his ambitions. He was ready to become anything to achieve his goals. With this feeling of satisfaction and excitement came a new determination. Max was ready to take on bigger and more dangerous tasks, willing to risk everything to achieve his goal. His dreams of wealth and power became even more vivid and mesmerizing, and his thirst for revenge against the rich only intensified. Thus began a new chapter in the life of Max Jackson, a chapter that will determine his fate and his place in the world of crime. With every moment after the successful robbery, Max felt that his life was finally beginning to change for the better. So much money opened up new opportunities and new horizons for him. He imagined everything he could do with this money. 
buy a house for his parents, provide them with a comfortable life, and also start his own business and get out of the shadow of crime. But besides the money, Max felt true satisfaction from the robbery process itself. The feeling of adrenaline, danger, the excitement of victory, all this made his heart beat faster and his blood boil in his veins. He realized that this was exactly what he had been looking for all his life. The feeling of freedom and power that the criminal world gives. With each passing day, Max plunged deeper into this world. He became bolder and more fearless, preparing for new and more ambitious robberies. His gang became his faithful team, ready to follow him through thick and thin, and Max felt like a real leader, powerful and confident. But even in the most triumphant moments of his life, Max knew that this was just the beginning. He knew that in order to achieve his dream, he would have to go through many more trials and struggles. And he was ready to take on this challenge because now he had a goal worth fighting for and powerful means to do it. After a successful robbery, Max did something that many would not expect from a criminal of his caliber. He decided to give most of the stolen money to those who needed it most, the poor and needy people of his city. He organized secret deliveries of food, clothing, and other necessary items for those who suffered from a lack of funds. He helped with paying bills, medications, and gave money for education and medical care. His generosity and kindness brought hope and relief to many people and his name became a symbol of hope and support in their small town. These actions of Max caused mixed reactions in his circle. Some saw nobility and compassion in him, while others doubted his true motives. But for Max, this was more than just an act of generosity. Max's actions aroused not only delight and gratitude in the eyes of those in need, but also dissatisfaction with the authorities and law enforcement agencies. The police did not like the fact that a criminal who robbed the rich became an object of idolization for many people in the city. They began an active search for Max, seeking to catch him and bring him to justice. Max understood that his good deeds attracted unwanted attention to his person, but this did not stop him. He continued to help those in need, despite the risk of being caught. For him, this was necessary to atone for his sins and prove that even criminals can do something good. However, with each new day, it became more and more difficult to avoid meeting with law enforcement agencies. They were persistent and methodical in their search, and Max knew his time might be coming to an end. But even in the face of danger, Max was not going to stop. He decided to continue his fight for justice and helping those who needed him most, in the hope that his good deeds would be stronger than his past misdeeds. And so began the hunt for Max Jackson, a criminal with a kind heart who became a symbol of hope for many, but a threat to the authorities. The rich people of the city who became victims of Max were beside themselves with rage. Not only did they lose their valuables and money, but they also felt vulnerable to a criminal who seemed untouchable. They began to put pressure on local authorities and law enforcement agencies, demanding that urgent measures be taken to capture Max. Political and economic pressure on law enforcement agencies became increasingly stronger. The rich and powerful people of the city used their influence and resources to achieve results. They promised generous rewards and influence in exchange for capturing Max and his gang. At this time, Max and his gang felt that they were on the verge of disaster. They became more careful, strengthened security and secrecy measures. But even this could not provide them with complete security against such powerful opponents. During this stressful time, Max realized that his time was coming to an end. He was forced to make a difficult decision stay and fight, or leave his city and start again somewhere else. But even in the face of danger and threat, he knew that his fight for true redemption and justice must continue wherever he was. Arriving in California, Max and his gang began their new life. They found work and a place to live, trying to forget about their past and focus on the present. In California, Max and his friends decided to leave their criminal past behind and start over with a clean slate. 
They carefully monitored their actions, trying not to attract attention to themselves and not get into conflicts with the law. Despite this, Max's past sometimes reminded him of itself, causing him a feeling of anxiety and uncertainty. However, he tried not to pay attention to this and continued to move forward, striving for a better future. Realizing that California offered great opportunities for new beginnings, Max and his gang began to see it not only as a new place to live, but also as a potential location for new heists. They noticed that there were many rich people in this state, and their houses were teeming with valuables and money. The idea of robbing rich houses in California captured Max's imagination. He saw this not only as a way to make money, but also as an opportunity to return to his old lifestyle, which he had missed so much. Max began studying the wealthy areas, their customs and routines, developing plans for future heists. He attracted new allies, people who were willing to follow him in his new endeavors. But even in his ambitious plans, Max remained cautious. He knew that robbing wealthy homes in California could be a dangerous and risky endeavor, and that his success depended on careful preparation and caution. Thus began a new chapter in the life of Max and his gang, a chapter that promised a lot, but also demanded a lot. They were ready for new challenges and adventures, striving for new heights in the world of crime. In the shadow of palm trees and the glare of the ocean lurked a world of theft and intrigue in sunny California. Among the many cities, Los Angeles stood out, an abyss of opportunities and dangers. It was here, in the depths of the city bustle, that a talented thief named Max flourished. Max was a master of deception and secrecy. His ability to remain unnoticed in a crowd and steal valuable jewelry from the most inaccessible places made even the most experienced associates respect him. But Max was not just a robber. He was a cunning strategist, conducting his business with intelligence and ingenuity. One day, in one of the most luxurious mansions in Beverly Hills, where diamonds and masterpieces of art became part of the decor, Max decided to commit his most ambitious robbery. The owner of the mansion, billionaire and collector Harvey Demond, was famous for his impeccable events, which brought together celebrities and the rich from all over the world. It was at one of these events that Max intended to make his move. With the help of his extensive information exchange and allies, Max developed an incredibly daring plan. The party at Demon's house was designed to make guests feel at home, knowing their safety was guaranteed by state-of-the-art security systems. But Max knew that no system could resist genius and audacity. That evening, Max entered the role of a guest, woven into the crowd of famous faces and millionaires. Majestic paintings and precious antiques surrounded him, but his eyes were fixed on one item, the Demon Pearl a rare necklace that became the highlight of the collection. Under the cover of fun and noise, Max calmly stole inside the house, bypassing the guards and passing by impenetrable walls. Finally, he reached the safe where the most valuable object was kept. Using his skills and special equipment, Max was able to pick the lock and take the pearl necklace. After successfully robbing Harvey Demon's mansion, Max's gang, known as the Jackson Gang, found themselves at the top of their game. The $300,000 worth of jewelry was the biggest haul of their criminal careers. But as success grew, so did the risks. The police began to actively investigate the robbery of the Demon Mansion, as well as other crimes committed by the Jackson Gang. This forced Max and his accomplices to become even more careful and extremely careful. Gathered in their hideout, the Jackson gang discussed how to use their new wealth while avoiding the clutches of the law. Some suggested considering leaving the country for a while, but Max believed that this was an admission of defeat. He decided that the best solution would be to continue doing what he did best, stealing but in a more careful and sophisticated way. Over the next few months, Jackson's gang began to work with even greater precision and accuracy. They chose their targets carefully, carried out thorough reconnaissance, and planned every move in advance. 
Max personally managed each operation, taking into account all possible risks and complications. With each new robbery, Jackson's gang became more famous and dangerous for the law. But at the same time, Max and his accomplices managed to remain in the shadows, avoiding falling into the hands of justice. Having escaped from the police, Max's gang faced new challenges and dangers. They remained in the shadows, avoiding capture, but each step became more dangerous. Turning off public routes, they hid in the most unexpected places. Abandoned warehouses, underground bunkers, even dilapidated caves in the mountains. They had to give up their usual comfort and luxury in order to maintain their freedom. Max, who became not only the leader but also the guide of his gang through these difficult times, continued to remain cool and insightful. His decisions were calibrated, his actions extremely careful. He knew that his freedom and the lives of his friends were at stake. Despite all the efforts of the police, Max's gang remained invisible. They used their contacts and resources to stay one step ahead of law enforcement. Their skills and experience as thieves were invaluable in this fight for survival. But time passed, and the police pressure became stronger. They began to penetrate deeper into the underground community, following every possible lead. Max and his gang knew they had to act quickly to maintain their freedom, realizing that Los Angeles no longer offered them safety. Max and his gang decided to leave. They understood that New York, although full of its dangers, provided them with more opportunities for a secret life and a new beginning. Arriving in New York, Max and his accomplices began the process of recreating their new life. They used their stealing skills to earn enough money to support themselves and also acquired new identities and documents to hide their past. New York was a completely new world for them, full of new opportunities and dangers. They quickly became integrated into the diverse fabric of the city, discovering new contacts and resources that helped them maintain their freedom. But even in the new city, Max and his gang could not completely relax. They remained on guard, knowing that the police could pick up their trail at any moment. However, Every day, the risks became less and less, and they began to gradually return to normal life. After establishing himself in New York, Max realized that the life of an ordinary security consultant did not bring him as much adrenaline as before. The old skills and passion for risk still lived within him, and he began to miss the days when every day was an adventure. When the thought of robbery arose, Max understood that it was dangerous and risky, but his excitement and thirst for adventure prevailed. He began to develop a new plan that was supposed to bring them considerable wealth and provide them for the future. Gathering his gang together, Max proposed his new idea to them. He talked about a potential target, a high-end jewelry exhibition, which was to be held in one of the most luxurious hotels in the city. It was an ambitious proposal, but Max was confident they could do it. The gang agreed to take on the challenge and they began preparing for the robbery. Max used all his knowledge and experience to develop a detailed action plan. They studied the hotel's layout, exhibition schedule, and security plans to find weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Max and his gang decided to direct their efforts to rob the famous jewelry exhibition, which was held in one of the most luxurious hotels in New York. Their plan was daring and cunning, but at the same time, well thought out and coordinated. Reconnaissance and Information Gathering Max and his accomplices began with thorough reconnaissance. They studied the hotel's plans, the layout of the exhibition halls, the locations of exits and entrances and security plans. They discovered security weaknesses and developed a strategy to exploit them for their own purposes. Creating a false atmosphere of security, they decided to create a false threat to distract the attention of security and police. One part of the gang was supposed to jam the security systems and cause a false alarm about a fire in the hotel, thereby forcing everyone to focus on evacuating and fighting the fire. Invasion and Robbery During this time, 
The second part of the gang was supposed to infiltrate the exhibition halls using emergency exits and unknown passages. They used their hacking skills and bypassing security systems to get to the most valuable artifacts, gathering the jewels, quickly. In anticipation of a chaotic moment when security would be busy with the fire and evacuation, Max's gang had to act quickly. They collected all the valuables they could find and left as quickly as they could. Safe escape. After completing the robbery, Max's gang had to quickly leave the hotel and hide in a safe place where neither the police nor security could find them. The plan was bold and well thought out, but as always, there were risks and unexpected circumstances. However, Max and his gang were ready for any challenge that might arise during their next adventure. When the day of the robbery arrived, Max's gang was ready to go according to plan. They were dressed in dark clothes and camouflage suits so as not to be recognized. Armed to the teeth, they split into two groups. One part of the gang was engaged in jamming the security systems and creating a false fire alarm, while the second group headed towards the exhibition halls to commit a robbery. The team involved in blocking the security systems worked quickly and professionally. They hacked electronic locks, jammed security cameras, and set off false fire alarms to cause panic and chaos in the hotel. While the second group entered the exhibition halls, using emergency exits and secret passages studied during reconnaissance. They worked quickly and silently, moving through dark corridors and security barriers to reach valuable artifacts. When they finally reached the showrooms, they began collecting jewelry, gold and silver jewelry, diamonds, pearls, and other valuable stones instantly disappeared into their bags while the clock struck them. But suddenly the situation changed. They heard the sound of an alarm siren and the chaos around them only intensified. Security began to urgently evacuate visitors, and our heroes realized that time was on their side and they must hurry. They acted quickly, filling their bags with all the valuables they could find. Then, using the same secret passages, they left the hotel and disappeared into the night, disappearing before anyone knew what had happened. After making sure they weren't being followed, Max's gang hid out in a safe place where they could share their loot and relax after the stressful heist. Despite the risks and difficulties, they were able to successfully complete their mission, moving closer to their goal and gaining new opportunities for their future. After the successful robbery, Max's gang carefully counted their loot. Gold, diamonds, pearls, all this was of great value, which could provide them not only with a comfortable existence, but also a new start in life. However, the joy of success was overshadowed by the understanding that the police had probably already begun an investigation into the robbery. Max and his gang knew they had to act quickly and carefully to avoid falling into the clutches of the law. While they were hiding in their temporary shelter, Max began to develop a plan for further action. He knew that they would need to redistribute the spoils to minimize risks and ensure their security for the future. One of the ideas was to decide to sell jewelry through his contacts in the underground world. They could get a high price for their loot, but it could also draw attention to their person. Another option is to save the valuables and use them as security when needed, but it could also create additional risks associated with their possession and discovery by the gang. While they were discussing their options, one of the gang members suddenly remembered an old partner who could help them with the legend of the jewelry. This partner was an expert in counterfeits and forgeries and could create perfect replicas of valuable items so they could safely sell them without attracting attention. This plan seemed the most reasonable to Max. They could get money for fake jewelry and then use that money to create a new legend and secure their future. Thus, Max's gang decided to act quickly and decisively, using their resources and skills to minimize risks and ensure their safety in this dangerous game of stolen jewelry. After discussing plans, Max's gang decided to turn to their old partner, an expert in the field of counterfeits and forgeries. This man was known for his skill in creating perfect replica jewelry, 
indistinguishable from the real thing. Contacting him turned out to be a non-trivial task, but thanks to their connections in the underground world, Max's gang finally gained access to this specialist. They agreed to meet at a secret location where they could discuss their plans. The partner suggested creating copies of jewelry that would be indistinguishable from the originals. He was confident that he could cope with this task and offered his services for a fee. Max's gang agreed to this proposal, realizing that it was the best way to avoid attracting the attention of the police and keep their jewelry. They provided the partner with the necessary information about stones and jewelry so that he could get started. While the partner was busy creating replicas, Max's gang continued to monitor developments and remain on the alert. They knew that every mistake or omission could get them into trouble. When the copies were ready, they were handed over to Max's gang, who immediately began preparing them for sale. They used their contacts and resources to find buyers willing to pay high prices for these perfect replicas. Through joint efforts and professionalism, Max's gang was able to successfully sell the counterfeit jewelry and receive significant money in return. Realizing that money could bring more benefits to those who need it, Max decided to give part of the funds to the poor. He had a deep antipathy to poverty, realizing that this problem leaves many people hopeless and deprives them of the opportunity to live a decent life. By giving money to those in need, Max hoped that this could at least slightly improve their situation and give them a chance for a better future. However, he did not plan to completely abandon his old lifestyle. For Max, stealing was not just a way to make money but also a part of himself. He continued on his path, but now with greater understanding and compassion for those more disadvantaged. Realizing that his life had begun to repeat itself in an endless cycle of theft and stealth, Max felt an overwhelming desire to do something incredible that would go beyond his usual routine. He understood that something needed to change in order to feel meaning and purpose in his life. One day, looking at the huge skyscrapers and endless possibilities of New York, Max felt a thirst for adventure and adrenaline. He decided that he wanted to do something that would make him feel alive and free, even if it meant taking a lot of risks. He began exploring different possibilities to do something truly incredible. One day, the thought of a robbery occurred to him, but an unusual one, not the same as before. It had to be something higher, more complex, something that would make the whole world wince at his courage and ingenuity. Thus, Max began to develop a plan that could change his destiny and leave his mark on history. This was something completely new, something no one had dared to do before, but Max was willing to risk everything for this one chance at greatness and adventure. Max plunged into deep thought, making plans and considering every detail of his unusual enterprise. He understood that this step must be well thought out and carried out with the utmost care, Otherwise, he risked everything, his freedom, reputation, and even life. Gradually forming a picture of his plan, Max felt a new kind of determination and courage being born within him. He understood that this would not be just a robbery, but a project that would require all his ingenuity and cunning. And so, when the plan was finally ready, Max realized that the time had come to act. His heart was beating faster than ever, and adrenaline was making his blood run faster through his veins. He was ready to take the first step towards his incredible venture. One day, when the city was immersed in the light of night lights and the shadows of stealth, Max was faced with his choice, to remain in the safety of his usual path or risk everything for a chance at great adventure and glory. And despite all the risks and dangers, Max decided to take a step into the unknown. He took his breath in his hands and went into the night to fulfill his dreams and change his life forever. Max continued to move forward, facing each step of his plan with determination and confidence. He knew that the path to the incredible would not be easy, but this only added fire in his eyes and firmness in his heart. The first step in his plan was to assemble a team a group of people willing to follow him on this incredible adventure. 
Max turned to his old acquaintances, people whose skills and dedication were necessary to complete the mission. He gathered a gang ready to overcome any obstacles on the way to their goal. The next step was to acquire the necessary information and resources. Max used his connections to gain access to information and technology that could help them with their plans. He studied places, times, and people to be prepared for any possible scenario. Finally, when everything was ready, the moment of action arrived. That night, when the city seemed asleep, Max and his gang moved forward, facing every obstacle with intelligence and composure. They overcame guards, bypassed security systems, and finally reached their goal. But what they found inside was far beyond their expectations. It was something far more incredible than they could have imagined, and Max knew they were facing something that would change their lives forever. Okay, let's review the story. Max and his gang decided to pull off an ambitious heist. They planned to steal some of the most precious diamonds in history. These diamonds were known not only for their enormous value, but also for their legendary origins, which made them even more desirable to thieves. Max looked over the plan again and again, making sure that every detail was worked out to the smallest detail. His gang was ready for action, and each member knew his role in this dangerous operation. At night, when the city was sleeping, Max and his gang broke into the building where the diamonds were stored. They were careful and silent, avoiding any contact with guards and security systems. Finally, they got to the safe where the diamonds were kept. Strictly following the plan, they opened the safe and found inside what they were looking for, crystal clear, brilliant diamonds emitting their own light. With the diamonds in hand, Max and his gang left the building and disappeared into the darkness of the night, knowing they had time to plan their next move and ensure the safety of their quarry. Thus began their most ambitious theft, and Max knew that this was only the beginning of their exciting adventure, full of danger, intrigue, and incredible twists of fate. The first step was thorough reconnaissance. Max and his gang studied the building where the diamonds were stored, studying the security systems, the location of the guards and the infiltration methods available to them. They worked day and night to come up with the best plan of action. The next stage was preparing equipment and tools. They acquired the necessary equipment to hack, disguise, and bypass security systems. Each gang member was trained in the use of this technique and knew their role in the operation. The plan was divided into several phases. The first phase involved entering the building. They chose a moment when security was least vigilant and hid inside the building, using emergency entrances and secret passages. Then the second phase began, breaking into the safe. They used their skills and tools to bypass the security mechanisms and get to the very heart of the safe where the diamonds were kept. When the safe was opened, the third phase began, collecting valuables. Max and his gang worked quickly and silently, collecting the diamonds and making sure they didn't leave a trace behind. Finally, the last phase is escape. They left the building using the same paths they had taken to enter and disappeared into the darkness of the night, taking their loot with them. This plan was thought out to the smallest detail, and every member of the gang was ready for action. Their coordination, professionalism, and dedication to each other were the key to the success of this audacio operation. Realizing that even the most carefully thought-out plan can end at the most unexpected moment, Max and his gang decided to steal diamonds, trusting their professionalism and ability to adapt to circumstances. They armed themselves with tools, hid their faces with masks, and entered the building, following their plan. But despite all their efforts, something went wrong. Just when they were close to their target, the security system activated earlier than expected, forcing the guards to come out from behind the wall. This was a surprise that Max and his gang didn't expect to encounter. While one part of the gang continued to carry out the plan, the other two, who found themselves outside the guards, encountered an unexpected obstacle. They were forced to fight for their freedom, but despite their skills and experience, they were eventually arrested. Max and the rest of the gang, 
knowing that time was against them, were forced to make the difficult decision to abandon their comrades and escape before they themselves fell into the clutches of the law. Now that two of Max's gang have been captured, their future is uncertain. Max and his remaining allies were forced to rethink their plans and make new decisions if they were to survive and reach their goal. After the arrest of two members of Max's gang, the investigation began interrogations. They were offered a deal, cooperation in exchange for a reduced sentence. Realizing that they faced many years in prison, both criminals decided to cooperate with justice. They spoke about their allies, revealing their real names and all the information they knew about them. They talked about each gang member's background, their skills, connections, and preferences. They revealed the details of the planned crimes and did everything possible to help the investigation catch the remaining members of the group. Their information was valuable to the investigation, and they were provided as witnesses against their former allies. Their cooperation helped bring justice closer to solving the case and solving many other crimes committed by Max's gang. Max and his remaining allies, realizing that they had been betrayed, realized that their time was running out. They were forced to change their plans and reconsider their strategy if they wanted to avoid arrest and maintain their freedom. Now they had to act quickly and carefully so as not to become the next victims of justice. The police managed to expand their investigations and detain three more members of Max's gang. This happened after one of the traitors revealed information about the whereabouts of the remaining members of the group. One of the gang members was caught trying to sell one of the stolen diamonds on the black market. Police operatives infiltrated the deal undercover and arrested him on the spot. Two other gang members were detained after they were found at their temporary hideout. Police received information about the whereabouts of the bandits from eyewitnesses who saw them in the area. Now, most of Max's gang was behind bars. Max and the remaining members of the group realized that their chances of successfully continuing their criminal activities had become extremely small. They realized that time was changing and they needed to make decisions quickly if they wanted to avoid jail time and save their lives. Realizing that time was against them, Max and the remaining two members of his gang realized that they had to act quickly if they wanted to avoid arrest and maintain their freedom. They knew that the police were already in pursuit and that every minute became more and more valuable. Without much thought, they decided that their only chance of salvation was to escape. They gathered their things and, leaving all ties to the past behind, headed south, towards the border. They had to use all their skills and resources to remain undetected and avoid falling into the hands of the police. They changed locations, used fake IDs, and avoided interactions with strangers to minimize risks. Days turned into weeks, weeks into months, but Max and his allies did not give up. They continued to run, knowing that every day they were free brought them closer to a chance at a new life. Their path was dangerous and full of trials, but they were ready to go through all this to achieve their goal. As Max and his gang fled through desolate areas, heading towards the Mexican border, one of them, Jake, fell into a trap. The police, quickly responding to their movement, sent a group of bounty hunters along the border. Jake, trying to avoid arrest, decided to swim across the river to reach Mexico, but he was caught on the Mexican shore. The police, together with Mexican law enforcement agencies, quickly captured him and brought him back to American soil. Now there were only two left for Max and his remaining ally as they continued their journey through merciless deserts and mountain ranges, hiding from the eyes of the law and seeking to find a safe place where they could hide and start a new life. Realizing that if they managed to catch one of the fugitives, then the other two, including Max, could be nearby. The police focused their efforts on finding the remaining two criminals. Using surveillance technology and a wide network of informants, police determined that Max and his latest ally were moving through desert areas towards a mountain pass. It was clear that they needed to act quickly before the fugitives had time to cross the border. Police organized an operation to detain them, with hundreds of armed agents, roadblocks, and even helicopters patrolling the skies. 
But Max and his ally were cunning and dangerous, and they managed to avoid the fight and remain free. However, the police continued to persistently pursue them, not giving them the opportunity to find shelter or hide. Suddenly, they found themselves surrounded and faced with a final battle for freedom and survival. When the police began questioning Jake, they encountered his adamant refusal to cooperate. Despite the pressure and threats, Jake insisted that he was not going to rat out his friends and was willing to do anything to protect them. For detectives and police, this was an unexpected turn of events. They were surprised and in some ways even delighted by his devotion and perseverance. Even though he was in a difficult situation, Jake refused to betray his friends or cooperate with the authorities. However, the police realized that time was against them, and they continued to put pressure on Jake, hoping that he would change his mind. But Jake remained steadfast, refusing to betray his allies. Thus, even though Jake was taken into custody, his loyalty to his gang remained unwavering. This became a new challenge for the police, who were forced to take into account his determination and willingness to fight for his friends to the end. The police were forced to admit that Jake had not turned himself into his comrades, and this created new difficulties in their attempts to capture the remaining fugitives. The possibility of hiding or finding refuge for Max and his last ally became increasingly likely. Meanwhile, Max and his ally continued their journey through mountains and deserts, trying to get to safety. They were careful and vigilant, avoiding any contact with outsiders and keeping a low profile. However, with every step the police were getting closer to them. They managed to identify traces of the fugitives, and moments of their closeness became more and more frequent. Max and his ally knew their time was running out and they needed to act quickly. Realizing that their chances of survival would increase if they split up and each went their own way, Max and his ally made the difficult decision to split up. They agreed to meet at a pre-agreed location if they managed to avoid arrest. Max and his ally carefully planned their routes and meeting times to minimize risks. Then they dispersed, moving in different directions and taking refuge in the shadows of the mountains and the thickets of the desert. Each of them was gripped by a sense of tension and uncertainty, not knowing what lay ahead. They continued to move, carefully avoiding the police and hoping that their plan would work. Time passed, but neither Max nor his ally remained hopeless. They continued to fight for their freedom, ready to overcome any obstacles and risks in order to return to their lives of freedom. While Max and his ally split up and continued on their way alone, the police stepped up search operations. Using all available resources and technology, the police focused their attention on finding the fugitives. One of the patrols patrolling along the deserted paths noticed movement in the distance. As they got closer, they discovered a hidden figure trying to get through the bushes. They prepared to make an arrest, ordering the man to stop and raise his hands. But the fugitive, realizing that he had been discovered, tried to escape. A chase began, during which the police used all their skills and equipment to stop the fugitive. In the end, thanks to coordination and professionalism, they managed to stop and arrest Max's ally. He was immediately taken to prison, and his arrest was another step towards completely solving the fugitive case. Realizing that the police were closing in and his chances of survival were becoming increasingly slim, Max realized that he had little time left before he was found. In this desperate situation, the thought occurred to him that this might be his last chance to leave the United States and start a new life in another country. As a seasoned criminal, Max knew he would need support and resources to successfully escape the country. He began contacting some of his contacts outside the U.S., looking for ways to obtain false documents and organize his escape. While the police focused their efforts on capturing his ally, Max focused on preparing for his escape. He used his experience and connections to gather the necessary resources and plan his path. Finally, the day of his escape arrived. Max entered an international airport using false documents and secretly left the country on a flight abroad. 
After setting foot on foreign soil, he felt his bad deeds and past let go and began a new chapter in his life, hoping that this time he would be able to avoid his previous mistakes and find a new start. As Max pursues his last chance to escape abroad, his ally finds himself in a brutal situation under pressure from the police. Despite all the persuasion and offers, he could not withstand the pressure and decided to hand over Max. Meanwhile, Max, relying on his knowledge and experience, sought to leave the country. But at the last moment, when he was already at the airport, the police raided him and arrested him. His escape ended at border control. After being arrested, Max finds his hopes of freedom dashed and he must now face the consequences of his crimes. He was taken to prison, deprived of his freedom and the opportunity to leave. During further investigation, the police found out that Max's gang had caused significant damage throughout their criminal activities. Analyzing their previous crimes, investigators estimated the total damages at more than $50 million. This included not only stolen jewelry, money and valuables, but also losses caused by bank robberies, car thefts and other criminal activities of the gang. This conclusion made their crime syndicate one of the most dangerous and largest in the region. Their crimes were well planned and carried out with a high degree of professionalism, making them especially dangerous to society. This news caused a wide resonance in society and drew attention to the problem of crime in the region. The police continued to actively work to expose Max's gang and bring all its members to justice. Understood. In this version, during the investigation, the police discovered that Max actually donated most of his money to poor people. It turned out that over many years of his criminal activities, he actively supported local charitable programs and provided assistance to those in need. This discovery led to some shock in law enforcement circles and society as a whole. Many began to see a different side to Max, realizing that he had other motives and values besides his life of crime. The police, realizing that Max was not so financially interested, concentrated their efforts on finding other motives for his activities. This led to a deeper understanding of his personality and motives and helped uncover other aspects of his criminal career. After carefully considering all the circumstances of the case and taking into account Max's donations, the court sentenced all gang members to long prison terms for their crimes. They each received 30 years in prison for various crimes, including robbery, fraud, and gun violations. However, when it came to Max, his determination to help people in need and donations worked in his favor. The court took into account his good deeds and decided to give him a more lenient sentence. Max was sentenced to 15 years in prison for his involvement in criminal activity, but also for helping people in need. This verdict caused various reactions in society. Some thought he was fair considering Max's actions in helping the poor, while others thought he was too lenient towards the criminal. However, this court decision reflected Max's complex nature and took into account both his criminal acts and his good deeds. After Max began serving his time in prison, his health began to deteriorate. During a medical examination at the prison clinic, it was discovered that he had HIV. This was a hard blow for Max, who was already trying to correct his mistakes and live a better life. Over the next years, Max continued to serve his sentence, battling illness and trying to maintain hope for the future. He found support in friendship with some of his accomplices and the support of his loved ones who occasionally visited him. However, his condition gradually worsened, and seven years after he was imprisoned, Max died from complications related to HIV. His death was a bitter reminder of the consequences of his previous life and the mistakes he made. Max left behind mixed feelings among the people who knew him. Some remembered him as a criminal, others as a man who tried to improve and help others. His story became the subject of reflection on the nature of human kindness and taking responsibility for one's actions. Ultimately, Max remained in the memory of many as something more than just a criminal.
His actions showed that even in the world of crime, there is a place for humanity and compassion. He became a symbol of some unusual nobility among the shadow arcades of the world. Max was considered one of the most honorable criminals in the United States, a man who stole from the rich but gave his money to the needy. His life and death became the subject of discussion, inspiring people to think about the meaning of life and the value of human dignity. Ultimately, Max's story reminds us that even in the darkest corners of the world, a light of humanity and kindness can shine through, and his legacy lives on in the hearts of those who believe in the possibility of change and taking responsibility for their actions. If you like the story and would like to hear more stories like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like this video, and leave a comment about what you think about the criminal Max. Your feedback is very important to us and helps us create content you enjoy. Thank you for your attention.